And Adobe Captivate. Uh, let me see here. What am I now that the DMC is closed? Uh, no. <laughs> so Dan and I work for Academic Technology. Uh, my primary role is the UW Madison Kaltura Media Space Administrator. And then after that, I also participate uh, in a group that supports tools like Captivate um, and other collaboration tools like Google Apps and things like that. I'm also currently in an online master's program uh, it's an MS in education, and I'm also, for my electives, I'm doing a certificate in instructional design, uh, and that's through UW Stout. So, I'm Dan Lavalley. Some of you might know me from my time at the Digital Media Center. Uh, obviously, sadly, the DMC had to close um, last May, but now part of my charge is trying to figure out how to best support some of these tools that the instructors were using at the Digital Media Center. Um, now that the DMC is closed, doing things like this, perhaps setting up some user groups or meetings, things like that, so that we can best uh, work and support the instruction that you're doing here at UW Madison. So obviously one of the tools uh, that I'm familiar with and Josh is familiar with is Adobe Captivate. And we're going to talk a little bit about this. Um, Adobe Captivate is one of many tools that can be used to do online lectures. And um, it's not a tool that we typically recommended in the past because it was expensive and it was fairly complicated to use. However, can I pause for a sec? Before we get into the presentation, though, um, how many of you so, have Captivate installed, or how many of you do not have Captivate installed and need help installing it? Because we might be able to get you to the point where you can participate in the hands on part. You're all installed? We have two installers. But you don't count, you can support yourself. All right, so we're good. If, if everybody's just being too shy and you want to speak up later, let us know. We do have installers. You want this? That one's just a little faster than this one. Yeah. That's the install of the software that was studying. Yep. I'm doing it now. Awesome. Awesome. Cool. Wonderful. Wonderful. Um, so what I was saying is previously we, we didn't, it's not that Captivate was bad, it's just that we, there are some other tools which were a little simpler, but over the last couple of years Captivate's gotten a lot easier to use. Uh, UW system negotiated with a contract, so anybody here at UW Madison, any instructor can download and install it for free at no cost. As long as your IT admins will allow you to install that's, software that's on your computer. Yep. <laughs> Otherwise, point this page to point your IT admins to software.wis.edu and there's actually packages on there that are targeted for departmental administrators to distribute this software onto laptops and not to make more work for your IT admin people but what version of that? Uh, nine. Oh is that already it yeah. is indeed it yeah. is um, the other thing that I'll mention before we get too much farther is this link will take you to the website for this presentation. This link will take you directly to the presentation itself. So don't feel that you need to previously scribble down notes. You have access to this. You just have to make sure that you're logged in with your UW-Madison Google Apps login. If you don't know what I'm talking about, let me know later and I can kind of explain some of that to you. But yeah, so we do have a few links in there that you might want to reference later if you yeah. want to play around with Captivate more. So why is Adobe Captivate kind of one of our supported tools? It's one of the tools that you can contact Academic Technology about, and we'll try to help you out as best we can. It's cross-platform. It's free. Uh, like we said, the interface has gotten a lot easier to use. Um, I like it because it does allow you to do per-slide updating. You can record the narration for one slide, and then maybe next semester you say, oh, this material has changed. I need to re-record my narration or update the slide. You don't have to then redo your whole half an hour, 20 minute or hour lecture, just update that one thing. I really like it because it natively supports HTML5 and with every new version of Captivate, it is getting better and better. You don't have to necessarily know what HTML5 is. All you have to know is that it's better than Flash and more accessible than Flash. It used to be an HTML5 works on all devices, whereas Flash does not. It is the new standard for kind of modern web content. 
Or one of the main standards. For yes, that one. yeah. It's a collection of standards, yes. let's just say that. Also, it's like many of the Adobe tools out there where, kind of like Photoshop, you figure out how to switch heads on your friends' bodies and put them on like superheroes or something. Like you start out with one small piece that gets you pulled into the tool that you start to understand, you get comfortable in it. Once you get comfortable with those small aspects, there is a whole bunch more that you can learn if you want to. Uh, so it allows you to do a whole bunch more than just narrated PowerPoints. You can do screen record, well, that's our next slide. <laughs> <laughs> oh, in fact, the bullet, one other bullet point that we kind of missed oh. is that there is a large active online community. Oh, yeah, yeah. And this is a that's the one I put in. and supported tool. Exactly. So there's tons of resources out there. Let's say that you contact us, we don't know the answer, or maybe it's the weekend and we're not responding quickly. You can do some Google searches and often find the answer to your question pretty easily because there's a, a lot of people out there using this tool. It is one of the primary tools that instructional designers use to create online courses. So there is a large community out there. I think if we look at my recent searches, we'll see a couple things that I actually, all three of these things are resolved by looking at the discussions that were going on online. So what can Captivate be used for? So the most common one that we're gonna be talking about today and showing you how to do is put your lecture online. So we know that this this is the active teaching lab. How is that necessarily active teaching? Well, really it's to try to get that information delivery out of the classroom online so that you can use your in-class time for more active teaching and learning it's activities. It's a tool for enabling active activities within the classroom. Um, it also does software demonstrations, so it can record the screen if there's, um, you know, some aspect that you need your students to see in some software or document or whatnot. Or if you want to do a screen recording of you critiquing their document while you're highlighting things, you could do that within it. You can do case-based scenarios. So you're going to have to put up with me next week when I'm talking about CSCR and how to do um, case scenarios with uh, Margin and Emmanuel. Yeah, but you can do that in Captivate as well. Uh, and then we just have kind of a general catch-all uh, known as complex learning objects. We've had uh, different people in the past create uh, scavenger hunts where um, they go through the hallways of where the DMC has been located and find things like a record and if they pick it up and bring it back to the DMC and put it on a record player at the digitization station, it'll play a little song. You could do all that kind of crazy stuff. It's like the next level. Um, so just to give you some examples, um, I'm going to show you, this is embarrassing, but I'm going to show you the one I've been working on. Um, it's He's still because it's him, but it's actually pretty cool. It's still a rough cut. Um, Hello. There I am talking. Module in the video consultations. With you can Adam see my bed. Sleep. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I have to make my bed. <laughs> All right, uh, so you can see it's a lot like PowerPoint here. I have a learning outcome slide. I decide not to put audio on this slide. Uh, for interactions, I can click next and previous. If you're going through these modules in sequence, I could your do next module captioning. why we make samples of our videos. This module also covered. Great. For so this then module, you will be working with two faculty members who need quiet. a consultation on video essentials. I've so basically, I have here, I'm going to turn my focus. Focus. But overall, this module is about being conscious in the moment and re So basically, I set up a scenario where there's two faculty members and you have, you have to do consultations with two different faculty members that have different levels of technical ability. And they will react based on the responses that you provide uh, in the scenario. Uh, so for example, um, they have a grumpy meter. <laughs> and if you do things that go against uh, what they're comfortable with, they'll get more grumpy. Uh, so I give you basically, you get to know the faculty member, figure out what they're doing, uh, what, why they came in to a facility like the DMC, and then you answer things like selecting your work area, what's the kind of work area that Dr. Page likes or does not like, uh, based on what you know about her. Like, is she the kind of faculty member that wants to sit down at a computer right away? 
And so then you come in, select something, and then no, she's not. And so like all these character models, they're all built in to Captivate. Uh, and then you go through the scenario and basically there's different kinds of assessment and quizzing throughout. So I just want to reiterate, we're not showing you how to build this kind of thing today. We want to show you kind of what you can think about down the road. These are the sort of things that Captivate can do once you've kind of mastered the basics, which we're going to be going over today. And now, five to ten years after you've been using Captivate, this is the example. <laughs> so this is what we meant by high-end learning options. Oops. From YouTube. Understood. You get cheesy Agent, actors. We have an emergency. <laughs> Ryan Intelligence has revealed that a group of highly capable hackers are joining forces to collapse the U.S. stock market. The strike will take place in one hour, where a hacker no, known so as Chorus will provide the final pieces of data needed for the hacker. That might be a subject for a future after teaching lab video editing and capture book. Hacker identified. You lost 15 minutes just getting to the hotel, Agent. The clock is ticking. We need data. So this is it from the presentations. If you want, you can... No need to remind me that time is of the essence. All right. We also have instructions on... You probably saw them in the sign instructions for this session, but we wanted to add them here as well in case you want to send them to a colleague. All right, so uh, tips and suggestions. There are spectacular tutorials on lynda.com with exercise files. Currently, uh, Linda only has Captivate 8 since 9 just came out, but I've gone through the 8 ones and they're very applicable for 9. They're really good. Uh, they also have an advanced techniques one that shows you how to do the things uh, like I did with uh, the grumpy meter and the happy meter and those kinds of things if you want to take it to the next level. So the other piece that I want to really emphasize here is even though we're showing you some advanced examples, I want to say, I want to encourage you to start small by just creating a narrated presentation and master that first, get comfortable with that. Um, so that once you, you, you've invested that time and you feel comfortable with it, you can next semester then maybe add a multiple choice question or add some of the more advanced features. Don't feel that you have to like create this crazy interactive beast of a project where you're, you know, you're feeling intimidated and like I'm never going to finish this or I don't know the answers to all these questions. Start small with a kind of easy, low-hanging fruit that we're going to show you here today. And, and of course, we're assuming that ahead of time you've already clearly identified learning outcomes and you kind of chunked up the information. You've maybe thought about doing some workflow diagrams and some storyboarding, which storyboarding could just be kind of outlining this in PowerPoint like we're going to show you. Um, that way, it makes Captivate a lot easier if you already have it all thought out of what you want to do. So, um, and also, I can't iterate enough. Uh, when you're working inside of Captivate, the preview project button is your friend. Um, go in, make sure the slides are looking good, make sure everything imported. Um, if you have animation in your PowerPoint slides, definitely make sure that the animation is behaving the way you expect it to once it's inside Captivate. Uh, so it's very important. One of the easiest ways that you can improve the quality of your presentation in Captivate is to invest 25 if you buy from Amazon or 35 from the tech store in getting a headset. This is the headset that Dan and I use. Yeah. So it doesn't need to be some high-end $300 headset. You can, you know, 25 to 35 bucks. Uh, the the quality of the audio will increase immensely and uh, your, stu your students will appreciate you for it. It makes you, your voice is clear, it's easier to understand you, they don't have to strain, they kind of hear what you're saying through the background noise, uh, it's well worth it. In fact, we're going to demonstrate recording using a built-in microphone uh, just to show you how bad it is and not because we forgot to bring a headset. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, um, very important is to remember the concepts of all these programs. They have project files, 
and they have published files. The published files are the things that you're putting online and that your students will interact with and how they'll consume your uh, lecture material and your content. The project files are where you're actually modifying and editing things and authoring content. In Captivate, those are CPTX files. You need to keep those CPTX files. You cannot edit published files or it is very hard to edit published files. So if you need to go back in and change some links to publications or some audio narration, you need to have that original CPTX file. This next piece, um, for those of you, well, I don't know how many of you use other Adobe products, but Adobe releases new products each year because they are a company that likes to make lots of money. <laughs> and part of that means that they will um, deprecate. Like you can't load a project from Captivate 1 into Captivate 9. You're only going to support maybe the last three versions. So if you start to create your lectures in Captivate, you want to make sure that as you go along that you load them into the new version of Captivate and resave them out so that you don't get stuck one year where you're going, ooh, you know what, I haven't updated lecture 3 for five years, I, gotta, I now need to update it and it won't load into the most recent version of Captivate. So now you're trying to find a version of Captivate that's three years old just to get it to load. And this is actually good, a best practice for any software, not just commercial software or anything. It's just uh, as more versions come out, older versions of your project files just won't be compatible with those newer versions. We found this, we just had a consult where it was PowerPoint and they recorded audio and it was just, it was too old and it didn't like those audio files and it was too late. We didn't have a version that could open up the stuff because it was too old. So, um, all right, so here as we're kind of working with Captivate, it's very important to record audio on every slide if you want to host an exported video file in MediaSpace, which this might be getting a little overly complicated a little early. But basically, one of the options for publishing in Captivate is to, com to publish it to a video file, and it just needs to have audio on every slide, even if it's just dead space. Dead How many audio. of you are familiar with Kaltura MediaSpace? It's the campus YouTube. It's a campus YouTube. Campus basically. YouTube without YouTube commercials and without Google farming your data and yeah. yeah. So, uh, and for those of you who are not familiar, I will be doing an active teaching lab on Calvary <laughs> Media Space in the future. Um, yes, so that is one of our readily available video hosting platforms. Okay, so now I'm going to get into some technical gobbledygook, but don't worry. So, score. What the heck is score? SCORM is just a standard which allows you to take a Captivate project and connect it into your LearnAEW gradebook so that you can do a quiz inside of Captivate. You, know, you could be delivering information and then quizzing your students on it, seeing if they're retaining it or understanding what you're asking of them. And then you can have that feed into your LearnAEW gradebook. I cannot emphasize this enough. Just because you can does not mean that you should. Yes. And you need I, to have a pedagogically significant reason yeah. for I, doing this. Yes, I, I, because I want to do that. Well, you need to do that. <laughs> Here's why I'm saying this. Because it is going to cause you many headaches. It causes a layer of complexity yeah. that, once again, it's the next level. And it, you will have to be doing troubleshooting. D2L is supposed to be completely SCORM compliant, but in reality, it's pretty bad, and Moodle is better at it. I'll be blunt and straightforward. Well, part so. of the problem is there's multiple standards and versions of SCORM. Yeah. So we're not going to. We're actually not going to be talking specifically about SCORM and gradebook integration. This is something that we can. We'll see. Maybe we'll have time at the end that we can talk with you about, or we can follow up with you about it after class. Or a chat on Monday. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. It's definitely what I would classify as an advanced topic yeah. for Captivate. Um, it's just something that, especially if you're new to the product, that it's, it's the, just a nice level. Yeah. Don't don't start here. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, where you could start by dipping your toe in is. You do an online narration, and then at the end of the online narration, you point them to a quiz that's built into the learning management system. The other option that I personally, um, you can do quiz questions inside of a Captivate file, 
and still have it learn at EW, but it doesn't have to connect to the gradebook. Having the students do self checks is very effective as well. Um, so that's an option for you too.